Hi, this is Dr. Karen Becker, and many of you have asked me to put together a better, more extensive list of, of foods, and what I've mentioned to all of you who have said to me, what's the very best food I can pick for my dogs and cats? There isn't such a thing as one best food. The more variety you can feed your dogs and cats, and the more species appropriate form you can feed it in, is the very best way that you can nourish your pets for a lifetime. So I'm here in Madison, Wisconsin, at an upscale pet boutique called Bad Dog Frida, and Bad Dog Frida has graciously opened up their doors, and they're gonna allow me to take a look around the store to help point out to you some things you can look at when you're trying to discern the very best foods you can feed to your pets. Come along with me. The best foods that you can feed to your pets will come from the freezer section of the Upscale Pet Boutique. One of the reasons that you probably will not find freezers in big box stores is that um, there's a lot of education that has to go along with beginning to institute a raw food diet. And so uh, some large-scale Petco's, PetSmart stores that do have frozen foods, they tend to, um, they don't have the, the educated staff that's necessary to help get people to want to purchase raw food. So you're going to have a better time finding uh, raw foods available at pet boutiques that have the knowledge to be able to help support and make your good decisions when it comes to what raw food you want to feed to your pet. So if you opt to feed a raw food to your dog or cat, it will come from the freezer section of the Upscale Pet Boutique. There's a whole variety of different brands, flavors, and protein sources that raw foods come in. And what type of raw food you specifically des decide to feed your dog or cat just comes down to what they're interested in eating. For instance, cats tend to do better uh, when transitioning onto raw food if you put them on canned food first and then move them onto a chicken-based raw food because it's similar to what they're used to eating in a chicken-based dry food. So when it comes to deciding what specific protein source, uh, there's all sorts of different uh, manufacturers that you can purchase, but then there's also different amount of veggie content and also fat content. So on the back of the dog food bag in this situation, things you're going to look for when you, when you begin to pick out a raw food is number one, is it AFCO compliant, which means is the raw food that you've selected, has it been approved to be nourished nourished uh, in a level that's uh, approved for all life stages for dogs and cats, which, which means the American Association of Food Control Officers has approved this particular food to be nutritionally balanced for all life stages of dogs. The other thing I want you to, to look at is the guaranteed analysis because the fat content can be quite variable among different raw foods. Raw foods can have quite low fat content for some specific brands and an incredibly high fat content in other brands. Some animals that are really thin, let's say if you have a really underweight boxer or pointer, they do excellent on a higher fat raw food diet. But if you have an obese pet or a pet that's suffering from pancreatitis, you would pick a lower fat food in those, in those instances. If you can't feed raw foods, if you're unwilling to feed raw foods, or if it just makes you feel nervous to eat raw foods, or in some cases, if cats won't eat raw foods, the next, the next best option for you, if you can't feed entirely biologically appropriate and raw, would be canned. Raw foods contain about 70% water, and the meat is in its natural state. Canned foods also contain between 70 and 80% water, and the meats, although have been processed, which means cooked, uh, it's still more biologically appropriate than dry food. So when it comes to canned foods, what you're looking for on the label is protein being first, grains, uh, whole grains, if you need to feed grains. We don't advocate feeding carbohydrates to dogs and cats, especially if they're healthy. In some instances, let's say if cats are in kidney failure or dogs are in liver failure, sometimes you have to supply a small amount of grains to help offset the amount of protein in the diet because dogs and cats can't process that protein efficiently. Today we're going to discuss healthy pets, which means if you have healthy dogs and cats, they absolutely require a good amount of protein in their diet. Uh, so in picking out a canned food for a healthy dog and cat, you would want to pick a canned food that contains protein, meat. It's important that meat be first and second on the label, followed up by good sources of veggies and fruits. And so when you read the label, it's important that those ingredients read in that order. So in this situation, uh, boneless, skinless, white meat chicken, Water sufficient for processing, which is always going to be second on the label of canned foods because water is primarily what you're paying for. Salmon, pumpkin, tomato, pea, sweet potato, sunflower seed oil. Those are whole vegetables uh, mixed with meats to make this particular canned food not only biologically appropriate, meaning water dense, it's not dehydrated, but it, it's made with whole foods, which is much, much better than split proteins, unidentified proteins, or split fraction grains, or pieces and parts of veggies and fruits. So whole foods is what we want to see on the label of an excellent quality canned food.
You'll also note on this can that, that it says up here, grain-free greatness produced with the same ingredients used in products for humans. In essence, what they're saying is that this is a human-grade product, which means it, it's not approved for human consumption, but the ingredients included in the ingredient panel are approved for human consumption. After raw foods, the next best option would be canned foods. If you're unable to feed canned food, there's an excellent in-between food called a dehydrated raw food. It actually is, of course, dehydrated, which means it's dry. But then it, it, the powdered meats and veggies are reconstituted with warm water. And that's a really excellent go-between. It actually um, is biologically appropriate because it's about 70% water or more if you want to add above and beyond what's required in terms of moisture content to the food. It's dehydrated raw, which means it hasn't been processed at high temperatures, so the nutrient value has been uh, retained in some of the foods. Because it's dehydrated, it's not truly raw. Raw means if you leave it out on the counter, uh, that decomposition will occur, and that obviously won't happen with dehydrated raw foods. But it's a nice in-between or go-between for animals transitioning from dry food onto raw. Or if you can't or won't feed raw or canned food, it's a great option that you can consider. So the dehydrated raw foods come in box form and then you reconstitute it with water. And the reason that I like many of these products is that it gives not only different protein uh, options that are available, turkey, beef, chicken, fish are, are available in the dehydrated raw forms, but it's really digestible. It's really powdered. And by adding water, it turns into almost a gruel. So it's great for animals recovering from gastrointestinal surgery. It's great for animals that have gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal sensitivities. I use it for animals that need a grain-free uh, food I option that um, the owners still aren't comfortable with feeding raw. I also use it for a transition food when animals are coming off of a bland diet, let's say from having gastrointestinal upset or pancreatitis or GI irritation. This is a great weaning or transition food. This particular food is approved for all life stages, which means you can feed it um, every day, all day, and your pet won't develop a nutritional deficiency. So it's also a great option. As you know, I believe in feeding a whole variety of different foods, not just protein sources, but if your dog is eating a lot of dry food, you can mix things up in terms of offering a different type of food by mixing in some canned or raw or dehydrated raw, as in this instance. Ingredients, you have to look at for every food you decide to feed. In this situation, it's dehydrated turkey, organic flaxseed, potatoes, celery, spinach, carrots, organic coconut, apples, organic kelp, eggs, and bananas are the first ingredients. Those are excellent whole foods in their natural form. So you can't get much better than this when it comes to the, the quality of ingredients that are added into this particular formula. It is AFCO approved, which means it's fine to feed. It's nutritionally balanced for a pet's whole life, and it's made in the U.S., which is also important. So first we have raw foods as the most biologically species appropriate option. Then we have canned foods or dehydrated raw, which you would add water into, in very similar constitution, moisture rich, carbohydrate free. Then after canned foods would come dry foods. And in this store and, and most of the pet boutiques that are really passionate about nutrition, they focus on species appropriate foods, including dry foods. But dry foods are lowest on my list, raw, then canned, then dry, when it comes to what's most biologically appropriate because it's lacking moisture content. Dry foods on average contain about 12% moisture. That means that dogs and cats live virtually their whole lives if they're eating a dry food, eating a moisture deficient food. And over time, that can be stressful to organs, specifically the kidneys. A lot of people will say, but they ha my pet has to have dry food. It cleans the teeth. And keep in mind that dry foods don't clean the teeth any more than you eating granola or crunchy crackers would clean your teeth. So what does clean pet's teeth is a shearing action of consuming bone-dense foods or grinding on raw bones or you brushing your pet's teeth. But dry foods don't have a shearing action, and most of them are carbohydrate-based, which means they contain unnecessary grains that actually promote plaque and tartar versus doing anything to efficiently help clean the teeth. In this boutique, there's foods that contain very few carbohydrates. So one of the bags of food that I'm going to show you now is a food that is grain-free. Keep in mind that all dry, crunchy, kibble-based dog foods have to have some sort of starch. It could be tapioca, it could be potato flour, it could be pea flour. There has to be some type of starch or gluten to make the food sticky to hold together so it comes out as a pelleted or kibble-based food. So even though they're grain-free, don't be tricked into thinking that they're carbohydrate-free. So on this particular label, uh, first ingredient is deboned salmon, followed by salmon meal. Meal meat, meat meal, is meat that has had the moisture removed. So salmon meal is salmon that has been dehydrated and ground up. Herring meal, 
and then followed by russet potato, deboned uh, white fish, sweet potato, peas, and salmon oil. So the first six ingredients are fish and potatoes, which are whole food. So all of the fish is whole, and then sweet potato and peas are also in their whole form. So this is as healthy as dry food as you're going to be able to find when you're trying to determine what would be the very best dry food that you could consider feeding your pets.